Get in the car, Harry. Hey, what are you trying to do? Kill somebody? Tonight on The Law and Harry McGraw. I set the alarm myself after everyone had left. We were alone. You mean you think she's guilty? Yeah, of course she's guilty. You're not gonna go work for the DA. He's looking for a new assistant. This could be a difficult situation for us both. I mean, after all, she is a friend. In this job, we have no friends. What I'm doing is my job. Oh, well, then go ahead and do it. I will. Fine. approximate time you called. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Please wait for the beep tone. Oh, Nelly, hi, it's Steve. Look, as you know, things have been a little slow lately. <laughs> slow? So if you don't mind, I'm going to run down to Buzzards Bay. Pitch Thompson's organizing a little fishing cruise. Lucky you. Overnight, you know, that, that sort of thing. Well, anyway, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, that is, uh, if you come in. How are you, by the way? I'm terrible, if you want to know. Well, so long. Oh. Harry! What do you say, McGinnis? I thought you were in New York. I was. I got back. Harry, I, I wish you wouldn't pop in. I, I unannounced. I, I hate you seeing me like this. Like what? Listen, EJ said you hadn't been around the office the last few days, and I come over here and find you doing spring cleaning. Oh, 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 oh. Didn't you ever hear of maids? Maids cost money, Harry, and I can't afford one. And the reason that I can't afford it, and the reason that I haven't been in the office in the last three days, is because nothing is going on. So you hit a dry spell. Dry? Harry, I have had to ring my phone three times just to make certain that it wasn't out of order. Yeah, if you ask me, there's too many lawyers in this city anyway. I mean, it's the other guys who are cluttering everything up, not you. I mean, as far as lawyers go, you're not half bad. <laughs> Thank you very much. Harry, I think I hear the clinking of Gil Hooley's good china. You're late for lunch. I'll see you later. Oh, speaking of that, you want to go out tonight and get something to eat? I can't. I've been invited to the McKechnie's. Oh, the McKechnie's. Excuse me. Well, look, it's a, it's a long-standing date, and I can't get out of it. I'm free tomorrow night. Great. Listen, we'll get something to eat at Gilhooly's, and then there's this terrific movie at the Twinplex, The Thing That Lived in Blood Lake. No, this time I pick the restaurant and I pick the movie. I'll flip you for it. Ah, the market is much too volatile. Now, the people involved don't have the legs for the long haul. Oh, I don't know, Ross, your company stock seems to be thriving. Not for the moment, Charlie, but hey, we're all vulnerable. Even that newspaper you write for. Charlie's a dear. Sometimes his tongue's a little sharp, but you're going to love him. I'm sure I will. I've been reading his column for years. Is this blush too light, Ellie? I look absolutely sick. You're crazy. You look absolutely wonderful. <laughs> now, don't be put off if he starts grumbling about the deplorable state of matrimony. Charlie's walked the gauntlet twice and has the bruises to prove it. <laughs> Well, thank you for small favors. Usually, you put me next to some lonely widower looking for his next housekeeper. <laughs> the fact is, I thought you two would go together like cheese and crackers. Oh, good. <laughs> and I thought you were trying to fix me up. <laughs> Wink. 
did you start matchmaking anyway? Good evening, Mannings. I hope we're not the last to get here. Not at all, Mr. Chase. Ah, good. Isabel and Ellie. Tyler, how nice to see you. Oh, yes. Uh, and uh, you both know Eleanor McGinnis, of course. Uh, Geraldine, Tyler. Geraldine, how lovely you look. I'm so sorry your brother couldn't be with us this evening. Well, he got called back to Washington. Some sort of an emergency meeting. Ellie, I had no idea that you were going to be here this evening. Nor are you, Tyler. Well, if I had been told, I would... Well, I'm... I'm uh, Geraldine is lovely. Lovely. But as far as anything else goes... What are you babbling about, Tyler? Well, I just didn't want you to think that there was... This is dinner. That's it. Dinner. I mean, if Isabel had said anything to me, well, then the two of us could have... But, well, you know, what I'm... What I'm trying to say is that if it were my choice, I wouldn't leave you for an instant. Hey, Tyler! Ross. Ross! Good to see you! Excuse me. Boston in July. I'm rather spend the weekend in the Marquis de Sade's basement. <laughs> well, in spite of the humidity and the heat and the traffic, some of us have to make a living. That's what's so beautiful about my beach house in Swampscott. Oh, Swampscott? Just bought it a month ago, and it's a dream. Oh. Well, personally, I prefer the cable. The only trouble is it's so damn peaceful, it takes me twice as long to get my column out. <laughs> Almost bought a house in Hyannis about two years ago. Well, I'm afraid I can't afford beachfront property right now. Oh, stop being such a stuffed shirt. Ross, darling, your manners, please. <laughs> Isabel, since you haven't the foggiest idea of what we've been discussing, now your interruption is hardly relevant. Harvey here, with his typically foggy outlook, suggests that we need less prisons, not more. He's right. The warehousing lawbreakers is not only futile and unproductive, it's also expensive. Oh, I see. You'd have them just roaming the streets at will, huh? Well, we've got enough of those already, thanks to a legal system that coddles defendants. It's clear you haven't been in a courtroom lately, Ross. Save your breath, Ellie. Trying to sway Ross with facts and logic is like trying to get a hen to lay hard-boiled egg. <laughs> well, it was a lovely evening. Thank you. Oh, I wish I could have torn Charlie away from that last glass of brandy. Bye, Ross. Ross. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Isabel, thank you oh. very much. We had a delightful Lovely. time. Uh, Geraldine, would you excuse me just for a minute? Ellie? I, uh, well, I, I just wanted to apologize to you for all that business at the table. I thought Ross's behavior was deplorable. Well, one thing about Ross is he doesn't let his good sense get in the way of his opinion. Now, of course, I was going to say something, but then I decided it really wouldn't be the civil thing to do. Absolutely not. I think your date has a date. Uh, uh, look, dear heart, I, I know that this might not be the best time, but I'd like to have a little chat with you. You're right. It's not the best time. Well, 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 look, Ellie, I know that things, well, that things have been difficult for you lately, client-wise. And while nobody admires you more than I do for trying to carry on in Matt's shadow, well, I mean, not, no, no, not a shadow, exactly. But the point is, I have developed an opening on my staff. And I would be delighted if you would consider Switching tables, as it were. Tyler! Uh, I think you better hurry before the evening is a total loss. Well, let's... Uh... Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Night. Sorry. Bye. Oh, bye, Charlie.
true. It's Ross. He's dead. What? He was shot. Sometime last night. But the police... I don't know, Ellie, that... They're acting very strangely. PD here. Harry, I want to talk to her privately. Why don't you poke around and see what you can find? Yeah, I think I'll start with the kitchen. Maybe I can get a cup of coffee. Why don't you pick up several? You can use them. I want the forensic report just as quickly as you can get it, all right? Tyler. Oh, no, no, no. Where is she? She's upstairs in the bedroom. She, uh, she's in pretty bad shape. What happened? Well, housekeeper got here at 7 o'clock this morning. Normally, Ross would be up and about by then. She went up to the bedroom to check. Found the door partially open. He was lying on the bed, 38 in his hand. A massive wound in the side of his head. <gasps> Suicide? That's a possibility. Has she been questioned? No, she's waiting for you. <sighs> Isabel? Oh, thank God. Oh, oh I can't tell you how alone I felt this couple of hours. You're not alone anymore. Now, come on. Do you need anything? Sedative? Mm -mm. Oh, Ellie. How oh, could something like this happen? I mean, suicide. It's insane. He had no reason. Now, look, right now, just try and tell me what happened from the beginning. You obviously didn't hear a shot. No. But then I'm a sound sleeper, and Ross's bedroom was at the other side of the house. Could somebody have broken in here last night? No. I mean, the alarm would have gone off. I set the alarm myself after everyone had left. You see, it's crazy, Ellie. We were alone. If... if he didn't commit suicide... You see what they're going to think? It is not important what they're thinking. Just tell them the facts as you know them. No opinions, no speculation. Yes? Who? Yes, hello? Oh, thank you for returning my call. Then you know what happened? Yes, yes, of course I'm upset. All right. Yes, I understand. I'll have someone meet you at the airport. Oh, who was that? What fantastic luck. That was Jefferson Randolph. The Jefferson Randolph? Yes, calling me from Dallas. And you know, Ellie, he's agreed to represent me. In fact, he's arriving this afternoon. I wonder. Would you be an angel and meet his plane for me? Peace and quiet are not part of this job. Headaches are. I used to take aspirin or Tylenol, but today my choice is Advil. My doctor told me to try Advil. He said it contains the same medicine as in the prescription brand Motrin. Just one Advil is as effective as two regular aspirin. Advil gets rid of my headaches, and it's gentler to my stomach than aspirin. For headaches, Advil. Tablets and caplets. Advanced medicine for pain. As a photographer, I count on my eyes to be 100%. When they're red, burning, or irritated, I use Visine. Visine gives 100% of what you need to relieve all these symptoms. That's what I call 100% relief. What more could you ask for? That softness in your style. Alberto Mousse, European styling firm. Designed to hold your hair in any style with softness. Ooh, Alberto Mousse. Feel that softness in your style. Ooh, Alberto. Introducing a high-performance luxury sports coupe made the Mazda way. If you like the idea of going places in a hurry, check out Mazda's all-new MX-6 GT. A turbocharged intercooled 12-valve road machine that'll outrun the top of the line onto Prelude and still run you a cool two grand less. Believe me, you don't have to drive it this hard to love it. You just have to drive it. This is the master. We 
have a chance to make history, gentlemen. When you know it's coming. I hope our lives don't get in the way of his ambition. It's the waiting. We could be getting in over our heads here. That gets you. Tour of duty. Let's cut the foreplay and get down to business. Revolting thought. Simon and Simon join forces with a lady bounty hunter. <laughs> this woman makes Ma Parker look like a Girl Scout. The Blushing Bride, The Eager Groom, Stark Revelations. We're all gonna live happily ever after. Knott's Landing, Thursday. Presidential politics in New Hampshire. The inside story from reporters Dan Rather, Bob Schieffer, Bruce Morton, and Leslie Stahl on the CBS Evening News. AIDS is a killer that does not discriminate. All Americans need to know the basic facts. Write AIDS, Box 14252, Washington, D.C., 20044. Mm -hmm. These are delicious, just like me dear old mother used to make. <laughs> Leftovers from yesterday. Harry, is it? Mm. I could bake you some fresh. Wouldn't take but a minute. No, no, thanks, Iris. Really, these are great. Listen, uh, you were saying about Mr. McKechnie? Mm, I could say a lot more, but I was brought up to say nothing but good about the dead. It's a wonder to me that she didn't bump off his lordship long before this. There's more to marriage than fetching and carrying, if you get my drift. The old tyrant. So, uh, they didn't get along, huh? Separate bedrooms. Ah, uh, she was an unhappy woman, she was. At least until the last few months. Oh, something happened? I remember the day that she bought that new car of hers. Came home with a glow to her face, and ever since there was something about her. <laughs> well, it wasn't just the car that was stoking her fire, if you get my drift. Why don't I freshen your cup? Oh, no, no thanks, Iris. Really, three's my limit. Mm. But, uh, you were saying about this alarm system. Now, you said you turned it off when you came in this morning? You weren't listening, Boyo. I said it was already turned off. I knew the minute I walked in the door that something strange was going on here last night. Yeah, now, this system, how could it get turned off across? What are you doing here? Having breakfast. Hey, you want some muffins, Tyler? They're terrific. Perkins? Yes, sir. Well, how, how about a cup of coffee? Iris here brews a mean pot. Mr. Perkins, would you please escort Mr. McGraw outside? I want him off the premises immediately. The door is on your right, McGraw. Just this way. Ellie. I just found how about here. lunch, Tyler? Yes. Pellegrini's one o'clock sharp on buying. Come on, Harry. Listen, I found out a couple of 24 things. 24 years I have known that woman. Really, 24 years. Maybe it's 24 hours and I just misjudge the time. The thing is, it's not going to sit too well. We may have a little problem. Get in the car, Harry. Whoa! And what are you trying to do? Kill somebody? If so, I just missed a golden opportunity about five minutes ago. So things didn't go so hard, huh? <laughs> you could say that. Yes, indeed. I'm getting quite a reputation as a limousine service. Certainly not as an attorney. Let's not go that far. Didn't get the job, huh? Well, listen, McGinnis, you can't get them all. For two years, I have been trying to keep Matt's practice alive, attempting in some small way to perpetuate the work he started. Do you know who she retained? Do you know? Well, no. Well, I'll tell you who. Jefferson Randolph, that oil slick from Dallas. Matt used to call him an unnatural gas bag. Well, I've had enough, Harry, enough. I happen to be a very good attorney. Thank goodness someone else recognizes it. Yeah, who? Tyler Chase. He's looking for a new assistant. Well, if he wants one, he's got one. Whoa, whoa, you, you're not going to go to work for the DA. Why not? It's a steady paycheck and it's steady hours. Both of which I could use at the moment. Yeah, but what about all the little guys? You know, the, the people being squashed down by the system. Idealism and noble intentions do not pay the rent. No, I'm sorry, Harry. My mind is made up. <sighs> They've beaten me. From now on, I'm looking out for number one. Harry! I just talked to Aunt Ellie. I can't believe it. Believe it? What happened? She freaked out. Temporary insanity. And believe me, that's the key word. Temporary. A few days working for Tyler Chase, and McGinnis will be right back here at the same old stand. I'm not so sure about that, Harry. I think Eleanor's suffering from a deep sense of loss, a shattered identity, feelings of inadequacy. Oh, yeah? When'd you hear that, kid? Psychology class? No, Harry, trigonometry. And where do you think you're going with that? 
That's all that stands between us and vagrancy. To the track. Yesterday, I picked six straight losers. So I, too, am suffering from a sense of loss. About a hundred bucks worth. So long. You know, Dexter, I still don't understand it. That horse should have won by three lengths. Hey, my man. That horse was fortunate to finish the same race he started in. It's easy for you to say after getting lucky today like that. I mean, anybody can play chalk. It is called chalk, because chalk is supposed to win, amigo. Faster horses are supposed to beat slower horses. This is a scientific process called handicapping. So, what are you going to do about Spinelli? It's coming down to a case of either begging for mercy or leaving town. Mr. McGraw? Yeah, I'm McGraw. <laughs> nice to see you, sir. I'm Jefferson Randolph, sir. I believe you and I may have some business to discuss. It looks like Spinelli didn't waste any time. Oh, you're the lawyer Isabel McKechnie trucked in, right? That's right, sir. Folks whose opinion I trust around here tell me that you're one of the finest private investigators in the city. Now, would you like to come to work for me? No, I'm sorry, pal. Uh... But for personal reasons, I have to turn you down. What would you say to uh, $500 a day? Plus expenses, of course. Ooh. <clears throat> Five, $500. Uh, <clears throat> listen, pal. On second thought. Fine, fine. I knew you were a reasonable man. Always like to do business with reasonable men. I'm staying at the Hancock house. You'll be at my suite at 8 o'clock sharp tomorrow morning. Always believe in getting going on a fast start. Work a full day. Good night. Eight a.m. in the morning. Isn't that the time you usually go to bed? <laughs> I cannot tell you how delighted I am to have us finally working the same side of the street. Tyler, you've been telling me that for the last hour. Mm. You know, I was very lucky to find a, an office right next to mine. It just came vacant a couple of days ago. Right in here. Oh. Uh, Mr. Chase, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I meant to be out by 9 o'clock, but they only told me about this last night. I mean, about moving, I mean. Oh, well, 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 that's all right, uh, 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 uh Parsons. Uh, carry on. Uh, we can go into my office for right now. I can't imagine how that happened. Mix-up in communication happens all the time. Tyler. Well, no harm, no foul. Look, dear heart, I have taken the liberty to make dinner reservations at a lovely little place in Brookline. Out of the way, intimate, far from the madding crowd. Tyler, if I take this job... If? Our relationship is going to be strictly professional. Oh, of course. And if you have any other ideas, you're going to have to escape from the madding crowd all by yourself. Well, <laughs> Hilly, it was just a suggestion. I mean, naturally, this is business. Just... Just business. All right, then let's get down to business. Well, I suppose we should begin with the McKechnie case. This is the file. I uh, suggest you familiarize yourself with it just as quickly as possible. Tyler, the, the McKechnie case? Mm -hmm. I don't know. The chief has decided to press for an indictment just as quickly as possible. An indictment? On what evidence? On what charge? Oh, murder one. Wait, it's, it's all in the file. Naturally, I will be carrying the ball, but I want you in there blocking for me. Tyler, this, this could be a difficult situation for us both. I mean, after all, she is a friend. Oh, hell no. In this job, we have no friends, except for the people. And we have a sworn duty to uphold the law, to dispense justice even-handedly, with no consideration to personal feeling. I mean, naturally, I take no great pleasure in this. Naturally. Oh, 
I've got everything running like a clock, Isabel. With everything on your mind right now, you don't need to be worried about the business. Thank you, Audrey. I'm sure you're doing a very capable job. This may not be the best time, but things are starting to move very fast, Isabel. On Wednesday, the board would like to convene to elect a new chairman. And with your stock, you're going to control the outcome. I really haven't given it much thought. I'm afraid you're going to have to, Isabel. You're going to need someone at the wheel that you can trust. Now, I would like your support. Can't this wait? Mr. Randolph is here, ma'am. Oh, yes, please. Show him in. We'll talk about this later, Audrey. Well, Isabel. Jefferson. My goodness, you are looking exceptional. I trust you were able to get some sleep last night. Some, yes. Fine. Jefferson, this is Audrey Stivick. She worked closely with my late husband. A pleasure, ma'am. How do you do? These are my associates, Mr. Linderman, Mr. Belfort, and Mr. McGraw. Gentlemen, Isabel, please give our conversation some thought, and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Nice to meet all of you. Thank you. Jefferson, please. Oh, thank you, Isabel. Isabel, you know me. I like to cut right through the sagebrush and get right down to hard rock. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I personally feel that these accusations against you are absolutely ridiculous. And I feel certain there'll be no charges filed against you whatsoever. But in any event, I have retained the services of Mr. Harold McGraw here to use his special skills as a private investigator, just to make certain that there are no surprises. <laughs> yes. As I said, I leave myself in your hands. Uh, Mrs. McKechnie, uh, that car out front, uh, the red job, is that yours? Yes, yes, it is. Boy, that really knocked my eyes out. That's some set of wheels. You had it long? Just a few months. How's it running? Fine. Is there some point to these questions, Mr. McGraw? No, no, I'm just a connoisseur, that's all. But uh, there are a couple of things that I'd like to clear up about uh, the night your husband died. Now, you told the police that uh, the servants had left and you and your husband were alone in the house, right? And uh, the housekeeper, Mrs. Delaney, she was away for the evening. Yes, she was attending her sister's birthday celebration in Springfield. That's kind of funny, isn't it? I mean, uh, scheduling a party, knowing that the help is going to be away? Iris is a housekeeper, not a maid, Mr. McGraw. Is this an interrogation? Oh. oh. <laughs> uh, Jefferson. Well, I'm certain that Harry here is just trying to establish the facts, Isabel, that's all. Harry, perhaps if you just couch your questions more diplomatically. Harry, you have a lot of tenacity, and I like that in a man, but you just can't go with a client like you would bulldog and a steer. I'm sorry, Mr. Randolph, but this whole thing with the alarm system really has me bugged. I mean, if the lady set those alarms, that means that somebody inside the house had to unset them. Maybe the victim, you know? Maybe he was waiting for company after his wife hit the sack. Yeah, that's an interesting theory, and it might help me cloud the issue. Cloud the issue? What about proving she's innocent? Oh, you don't know how much I'd love to believe that. I surely would. I mean, you think she's guilty? Oh, of course she's guilty. Why else would they hire me? Hell, it cost them $100,000 for me to walk on the airplane. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, come on, Harry. You're a good old boy, and I like you. I shouldn't have do. But I don't want you to trouble yourself about who's guilty or who's innocent here. Hell, I believe if I'd have done that, I'd have starved to death over the years. <sighs> innocent. I don't believe I know how to go about defending a client who's innocent. <laughs> So you feel altogether better and awake. McDonald's cheddar melt. We're gonna bring on the beef, spread on the cheddar, grill up the onion, stack it on a rye bun, mobilize some super-sized fries. Cheddar melt. They won't be around for long, so get them while McDonald's still has them. No, this 
is not a high-tech surveillance system. It's the sonar autofocus of the remarkable Polaroid Spectra, the only camera system you can buy that lets you hold the picture in your hand while you still hold the feeling in your heart. The muffler shop, the transmission shop, the tune-up shop. None of them has this total car specialist, Mr. Goodrich. Whatever's happening with your GM car, he can fix. Because he has more than just a shop, it's like a laboratory. Equipped to diagnose any system in any GM car. And he's trained to understand the total automobile, not just parts. Mr. Goodrich, the total car specialist. No one knows your GM car better. No one. Stay tuned for The Law and Harry McGraw. On Beauty and the Beast, he has always been there to protect her. But when his world is threatened, she is the only one who can save him. I have no choice. Then on Dallas. Hey, what the... Sometimes you win. Worked like a charm, didn't it? And sometimes you lose. I'm not giving you a divorce. And on Falcon Crest. It is murder out there. And inside, it doesn't get any better. This is fun. It all happens Friday, starting at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. There's so much more to come. Because the day was made for love. On the Bold and the Beautiful Weekdays. This is CBS. If you're concerned about heart disease and your doctor advises exercise, the right foods, and an aspirin a day, you should know that heart specialists recommend Ecotrin more than Bayer when they're concerned about aspirin irritation. Because Ecotrin is safety coded. Heart specialists know the importance of aspirin. That has been shown to help reduce the risk of heart attack as much as 50%. Safety coded Ecotrin. The one heart specialists recommend more than Bayer. Because of currency fluctuations, this five-passenger Mercedes now costs an improbable $70,000. For the same money, you can have this elegant six-passenger Cadillac DeVille. In fact, for that money, you can have two DeVilles, his and hers, with enough left to pay a chauffeur's wages for a year. See your Cadillac Tri-Statesman. Why pay more money for luxury when you can have more luxury for your money? I'll never give up my Can a woman take her own child's life? Tonight at 11. I want to know where she shops, what she buys. If this lady sneezed, I want to know what kind of tissue she used. Oh, and get me a line on this car dealer, Luxury Land Imports, Wellesley. You know the drill. Harry. Oh, just the guy I want to see. Now listen, this Ross McKechnie Foundation, I want to know the whole nine yards. Who, you. when, what, where. Listen, this is interesting. Isabel McKechnie stands to inherit the whole ball of wax, unless, unless, now this is the good part, unless something prevents her from doing so, like doing 30 to life in the state prison, you know? Then the McKechnie Foundation gets the whole inheritance. Well, that is very interesting, Harry, but I came in here to tell you you got another parking ticket. Wait a minute, kid. Does that mean you're not going to help out? I'm an attorney, Harry, not a detective. I know how Roosevelt felt on Pearl Harbor Day. So I guess life with Tyler isn't exactly a ride on the old merry-go-round, huh? What are you talking about? That crack you made in my office. I was referring to you, Harry. Good luck with Jefferson Randolph. You two make a beautiful pair. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. First, my best friend treats me like a piece of lint, and then you go over to the other side. At least with Tyler, I know where I stand. Yeah, well, if you want to stand there with him, that's your lookout. Let me tell you something. Just so that you know, I have decided to change my will. I'm going to have a private cremation in order to spare myself the humiliation of a funeral service to which nobody shows up. If I have any friends, God knows they haven't stepped forward to identify themselves. Hey, what was I supposed to do? It was your idea to go to work for Tyler the Terrific. Besides, this guy Randolph's paying me a lot of money. Oh, I bet he is. 
That's what it is with you, isn't it, Harry? Money, money, money. Hey, what is it with you, McGinnis? Have you flipped out or something? Of course I haven't flipped out. Jeez, I don't know. I mean, one day of this, and uh, you're acting like this. I don't think you're really cut out to be a prosecutor. You know, this happens to be a very responsible job, upholding the law, dispensing justice even-handedly, getting rid of the criminal element off the streets. Oh, oh, yeah? Like your old college friend who you broke bread with for four years? That's you mean that my criminal job. element? That's your job? Well, what I'm doing is my job. Oh, well, then go ahead and do it. I will. Fine. Fine. Good. Good. See you in court. Right. See you in court. Oh, I just checked out that car dealership, Harry. Mrs. McKechnie bought the car four months ago from a salesman named Lee uh, Simpson. Must have been a real lemon. She's been back about once a week ever since. Take care of everything, we'll fix it, no problem, okay? I'll see you, sweetie. Bye-bye. Uh, Mr. Simpson? My name's McGraw. Hi, I'm Lee Simpson. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in looking at a new Rolls. <laughs> we talking trading here, Mr. McGraw? <laughs> trade in? No, oh, no, it's not for me. Uh, I'm buying it for somebody else. Uh, see, the thing is... Uh, I represent this lady who uh, wants to buy it as a present for a young man to whom the lady is not married. Uh, am I coming across? Yeah, perfectly. So we're talking about a cash transaction. Oh, on the barrelhead. And the lady's name? Well, uh, <clears throat> that's kind of privileged information, but I was recommended to you by a Mrs. McKechnie. She's a lovely lady. OK, let me show you what I got. Wow, <laughs> these are gorgeous. Yep, they're beauties. <laughs> What's this, a submarine? <laughs> it's a custom job. Oh, I like this beauty down the end here. OK, let's take a look at it. Is this real gold? Almost. Hop in. I tell you, Mr. McGraw, you have a sharp eye. This particular mo What is this? Now, let me lay it on the line for you, pal. Mrs. McKechnie doesn't want any trouble out of you, understand? What? She's cutting the cord. It's over. Finished. Kaput. Capiche? Look, I don't know what you're talking about, OK? Hey, you're not listening to me, Bright Eyes. She's a widow now, a very rich widow. And what she's got, she doesn't need any help spending. Now, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. OK, OK. Look, I don't care if I ever see that woman again for the rest of my life, and that's the God's honest truth. Convince me. <laughs> She tried to call me a few times last week. I didn't even return her calls. I mean, it was nice in the beginning, but then she was all over me every time I turned around. And do I look dumb? Any dame that would offer a husband like that, that's a dame I want no part of, OK? I have known this woman for years. She's just not capable look, of doing anything. Look, I'm not anything. insensitive to the fact that she's a friend of long standing, Capadellas and all that sort of thing. But justice must be served. Hmm? I mean, regardless of your social contacts, political connections, or friendship. Hello there. Well, Charlie, hello. I didn't know you ate here, Garrett. Okay. Usually I don't, unless somebody else is picking up the tab. Yes. Huh? Oh, okay. Excuse me. Minor emergency. <laughs> what the hell's all this about you working for the prosecution? It's a contradiction of everything you've stood for. And your late husband. Now, look, Charlie. And now you're going to prosecute Isabel McKechnie? Come on, well, what's the story? What are you trying to prove? The fact is that I have not made a decision yet, Charlie. Oh, Audrey. Hello, Eleanor. How nice to see you. Nice to see you. Audrey. Uh, Charles Garrett, Charlie, Audrey Stivick. How do you do, Mr. Garrett? Pleasure to meet you. Eleanor, don't you think it's so fortunate for Isabel that she's gotten Jefferson Randolph to defend her? Yes, he's one of the best. Well, I would love to chat with you two, but I have a two o'clock, excuse me. Nice lady. Look, I'm, I'm sorry if, if I offended you. Oh, Charlie, don't think it. Think about it. I seem to be a fair game for everybody these days. Well, dear heart, that was the chief. And it appears there's a flag on the play. What do you mean? Pressure is being brought to bear by members of the financial community. I think a deal is brewing. What sort of deal? 
We'll probably reduce charges, some sort of psychiatric commitment, and then this whole thing blows over. Really? Mm -hmm. Whatever happened to equal justice under the law? Well, I thought you'd be delighted. The last thing I want to see is my good friend convicted. But what appalls me even more is that you and the chief would abuse the system for the sake of political expediency. Oh, no, it wasn't my idea. I was a fool to think that I could join your chummy little club. No, thank you. Insolvency be damned. Take my chances on the other side of the courtroom. Naturally, I am very concerned about your discovery of this used car salesman. However, I think it's very lucky that you discovered him before the district attorney did. Yeah, well, it's not going to help our case much. Uh, here's what I want you to do. You get $10,000 in cash from Mr. Lindemann here, and you give it to this Mr. Simpson. You tell him to take a vacation, a long one. Whoa, whoa, wait a second, Mr. Randolph. Paying witnesses to split before a trial, that's not my job. <laughs> of course it's your job, Harry. What do you think we hired you for? You have to take care of all these messy details that me and my boys here cannot get involved with. Just like that, huh? So that's what you meant by my uh, special skills, huh? I'm supposed to be your bag man? A highly paid one at that. Listen, Red Rider, if you're looking for an errand boy, why don't you check the yellow pages? In the meantime, excuse me, but I just got this sudden urge to take a bath. <laughs> What do you say, kid? Anything happening? Yes. Ellie's back. She's in her office. She just quit Tyler Chase. No kid. Don't rub it in, Harry. She's feeling lousy. Who isn't? Hi, McGinnis. Oh, hello, Harry. Look, if you're here to say I told you so... No, no. You know, that guy Randolph is a grade-A jerk. You know what he wanted me to do? Pay off a witness. I mean, I've been working for a class act like you and Matt for so long, I forgot there's a bunch of spittoons out there. That's very nice, Harry. <clears throat> Listen, um, E.J. told me that you gave Tyler the old heave-ho, and by me, that's terrific. Now, McGinnis, do me a favor. For me, don't change your mind, okay? Because I like you right where you are, right behind that desk. So do I. All right. <laughs> Just that I wish that I could do something for Isabel. Because in spite of the evidence, I don't think she's guilty. You don't know how happy I am to hear you say that, Eleanor. Isabel. Right now, I... I'm in desperate need of someone who'll believe in me. <sighs> You look awful. Huh. Come on, sit down. Can you believe it? My lawyer, or rather my ex-lawyer, who I just fired, wanted me to plead not guilty by reason of insanity. Well, I'm not guilty by reason of innocence. I didn't kill him. Please, Ellie, help me. Represent me. I don't know where else to turn. commercial to scented craft. Watch. Kraft is changing Kraft macaroni and cheese to Kraft cheese and macaroni. Why? Because it's got more cheese. Lots more. And it's the cheese that makes it taste so good. See? It's the cheesiest. Kraft cheese and macaroni. It's the cheesiest. Think they'll like it? <laughs> Static Cling can make you feel like this. What's your solution? Static Guard. Static Guard eliminates Static Cling instantly, completely. Get Static Guard. It's your best solution for Static Cling. Many people need to cut down on salt for better health. Instead of salt, use great tasting Mrs. Dash with 14 natural herbs and spices. Use Mrs. Dash on every dish for zesty, savory flavor. For better health, instead of salt, try Mrs. Dash. This is a Maytag washer. For 80 years, people have counted on it to clean their clothes perfectly. It is built to be strong, enduring, and dependable. However, it does not do dishes. This is a Maytag dishwasher. Think of it as a Maytag washer that does do dishes. After all, you don't spend 80 years building washers that last longer and need fewer repairs without learning something. They did it to me again. The dishwasher from Maytag. 
the dependability people. Yeah, it's funny. It's like a piece of clothing. You can wear it one day, one way, one day, and another way the next. No one is going to buy four cars, but if they can have one car that has that many functions. You know, with a car that's versatile, there's always a way to have fun. Nissan, built for the human race. I saw Lee Simpson a few times, yes. And I found him attractive. But he was using me just as much as I was using him. And the fact is that... Ross and I had been sleeping in separate bedrooms for over two years. He just... just wasn't interested. Tell me again about the night of the party. Everybody was getting ready to leave, right? Mm -hmm. First the Benningtons. And then the Ryans, then Ellie. And, and Geraldine LeBeau and Tyler were right behind me. Charlie Garrett was the last to leave. He'd, he'd parked his new BMW around the corner some distance from the others. He was afraid of getting it scratched or something. Well, I watched from the doorway as Charlie's car went out the gate. And then I pressed the button to shut the gate. I closed the front door and I set the alarm system. And from that moment on, there's no way that anyone could have broken into the house without setting off the alarm and alerting the police. And you have no idea how that system got disarmed? <sighs> oh, not unless Ross did it without my knowledge. Here it is, Harry. Everything I could find in the library on the Ross McKechnie Foundation. Oh, good work, kid. The Foundation Charter confirms what you thought. If Isabel is found guilty, the Foundation gets all of her stock. Making the Foundation the chief stockholder in the company. <laughs> Lucky Audrey. Lucky how? I read somewhere that Audrey Stivick is to administer the Foundation. That's in there, too. Whoa, whoa, hold the mayo. I, I thought you told me that uh, Charlie Garrett and this Stivick dame never met each other. They didn't. Not until I introduced them today. Well, how come he wrote an article about her and the Foundation about ten months ago? That can't be. Hey, read this. Miss Stivick says, Miss Stivick claims. I mean, what, what'd she have, a paper bag over her head? It doesn't make any sense unless... Unless? What? What? What are you thinking? I'm thinking it's mighty strange how a guy on a newspaper man's salary is suddenly into BMWs and beach houses and, uh, what are you, Krugerands and caviar. I mean, it makes you wonder who this guy's in bed with, figuratively speaking, or not. This button controls the gate, and the others control all the alarms throughout the rest of the house. Okay, <clears throat> listen, I want to try something. McGinnis and I are going to leave. Now, after we're gone, I want you to do exactly what you did the night your husband died, all right? All right. Come on, McGinnis. <clears throat> you got, Mrs. M. Slick, but not foolproof. But... How do you... How? Simple. You came in the back way before you could set the alarm. But I saw you drive away. That was Stephen and Harry's niece. Don't you see it? The killer never left the place. He came around the back just like we did, and somebody else drove his car away. Somebody who'd been hiding in the car the whole evening. Now, he came in, waited till you and your husband were asleep, then he went upstairs and pop, pop with a silencer, came back down, disalarmed the system, and hot-footed it over the wall. Who? Tyler Chase? <laughs> well, much as that would make my day, I'm afraid it was somebody else. Good morning. Good morning, Charlie. Is this what they call atmosphere? Yeah. I love it. 
Well, I thought we could combine breakfast with the interview and save us both a lot of time. Fine by me. How's the, uh, how's the food here? Unforgettable. Good morning. This is Charlie Garrett. Yes, Mr. Garrett. Charlie Garrett. I don't suppose she's in yet? Oh, uh, no, not yet. Well, when she does, will you give her a message for me? It's very important. Tell her to meet me at my beach house in Swampscott. Swampscott? Yes, she knows where it is. Tell her it's urgent. The thought of finishing college was absolutely traumatic. I mean, I had a degree, of course, but there was something so... Oh, I don't know and nest-like about a sorority. Well, you know what I mean. And here I was, faced with going out in the world to make a living. I mean, to actually earn money, as it were. And... of the wife's chauffeur, or was it the handyman? I I'm sure it was one of them. So, anyway... Well, look, Eleanor, uh, this is fascinating, but I really have to go. But, but I haven't gotten to the punchline yet. Really? Then why do I feel so punchy? Oh, very good. Look, Eleanor, uh, I'm out of tapes, I'm out of patience. I'm merely providing you with detail. You see, I always hate it when, when you read about somebody and it's all fluff and no substance. Eleanor, and thank I you. At the risk of seeming rude. Goodbye. Hey, McGinnis. Oh, you must be Charlie Garrett, huh? I'm Harry McGraw, an old pal of McGinnis, and she must have told you all about me. You seem to be the one topic she mercifully left out. Oh, no kidding. But listen, uh, you know that story you just got? Forget about it. I'm going to give you a doozy that's going to make page one. Sit down. See, I just had a little chat with Audrey Stivick. Oh. Your old pal, Audrey Stivick. The thing is, we had this little chat in the living room of your beach house at Swampscott. Listen. What do you think you're doing here? This is Assistant D.A. Tyler Chase and Lieutenant Perkins from Homicide. Homicide? I don't know anything about homicide. You don't, huh? You know, you and Charlie Garrett have got a slick little act. You pretend you don't know each other. It's very strange, considering you found your way to this place without asking anybody. And not only that, you got a key to his front door. All right, so I know so what? So we're talking murder here, Cupcake. The night that McKechnie was killed, you hid in Garrett's car. And just before he drove away, you hopped out and you let yourself in the back door. Please. Now, you wanted control of his company, didn't you? And you knew if McKechnie was found dead and his wife took the heat for it, the controlling stock would go to the foundation. And you control the foundation. Pretty slick. I didn't kill him. Stevick placing you under arrest for the murder of Ross McKechnie. You have the right to remain silent. I didn't kill him. I drove the car, but it was Charlie. Charlie killed him. It was her idea. Right from the beginning, she's the one who wanted him dead. Take him away. All right, let's go. Charlie, Charlie. Well, McGraw, once again, the Almighty has chosen to provide you with a plethora of providential favor. He says you got lucky, Harry. 
I got lucky? No, this is your lucky day, Tyler, because you know what today is? Wednesday. And you know what that means? Coleslaw and calamari. All you can eat for $1.95. And don't tell me you're not hungry, because McGinnis talked so long, it's already lunchtime. <laughs> hey, Patty, three specials. My treat. <laughs>